So what I argue in my paper is that, in fact, these researchers have misestimated the elasticity of dem demand for gasoline. Not only that, the assumptions that they have used or the methods that they have used have actually underestimated significantly the elasticity. So the first thing that many researchers do, which I uh, claim that is a problem, um, is that they estimate the extensive margin, which is how, what types of vehicles people purchase, separately from the intensive margin, which is how much people drive. So the idea here is that you know, if you have a very long commute time, you're probably going to buy a more comfortable car. And at the same time, if you have a more comfortable car, you're probably going to be induced to drive it more. So these two margins are affecting the individual at the exact same time. And if we estimate these two margins separately, we're going to misestimate how individuals respond to changing gasoline prices. The second thing that many researchers do is they aggregate the choice set into large groups, such as SUV, van, car, and truck, in order to facilitate estimation. However, at this type of aggregation actually ignores a lot of the subtle changes that are happening along the extensive margin. So if a household goes from a Ford Taurus to a Honda Civic, if you know, those two were contained in one of these categories, the researcher would say there's no change whatsoever. So it's really important to have a more, much less aggregated choice set in order to capture the, that movement. My paper is going to disaggregate the choice set completely so that individuals can choose a model year. For example, a 1992 Ford Taurus. While this does significantly increase the dimensionality of my paper, my method allows for it. So um, I have I will demonstrate that actually aggregating the choice set impacts significantly the elasticity estimate. The third thing that I'm going to be doing um, is I'm going to model the vehicles in the household's garage as being dependent on each other. Now, many researchers choose to model these vehicles as independent because it facilitates estimation. However, the problem here is that this ignores the capability of the households to substitute between the vehicles in the garage as relative operating costs change. So if a household has an SUV and a car, when gasoline prices increase, we would expect to see a shift from the SUV to the car. Um, but if these two margins are estimated separately, we would be missing out on this extra movement. So my method allows for me to um, not assume independence.